you might not know her name, but if you visited the Missouri History Museum, you've probably seen her work. When I first took the position at the Missouri Historical Society, Anna Maria's was one of the first uh, names that I really became familiar with because we used selections from her artwork so often in our other exhibitions to illustrate articles because it truly gives a one-of-a-kind look at early St. Louis. But what I, what I came to realize is that um, although I knew her work, I didn't know her. In her new book, More Than Ordinary, early St. Louis artist Anna Maria Von Fuhl, senior curator Hattie Felton changes that for all of us by delving into the life, times, and catalog of Missouri's first known female artist. Felton says that when Von Fuhl began visiting and then moved to the Missouri Territory in the early 1800s, St. Louis was a city on the verge, a confluence of diverse peoples and cultures. Lucky for us, Anna Maria Von Fuhl was determined to capture it. She would have been sitting there with her sketchbook, sitting there with her watercolors, doing these uh, lovely hasty little uh, sketches of the street scenes and the landscapes around her. And I don't think anyone would have thought anything of it until, you know, until today when we can really look back and say, wow, she left us with a gift. Hattie Felton, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So your new book is More Than Ordinary, Early St. Louis Artist, Anna Maria Von Fuhl. Yes. It must be so exciting to actually have this tangible book in your hand with your name on it and this project really coming into reality. It is thrilling to, to know that this incredible artist whose work has for 200 years or so really been um, not appreciated in its entirety, to know that she is finally getting her moment in the spotlight and to be able to have a hand in connecting the public with this incredible collection. So seeing the book, uh, you know, seeing how beautiful it is, uh, flipping through the pages is, is definitely exciting. I imagine too, working as a curator, you're used to a certain way of how things are presented and you can impart your creativity within it, but then to take it to a whole nother level or realm uh, with a book um, must have been really cool. Absolutely. You know, um, we have an incredible collection at the Missouri Historical Society. Um, it is almost 170,000 artifacts strong. And what that means is that for a lot of our collection, especially our art collection, um, many pieces are not seen. You know, they, they don't always get the chance to go on exhibit. And even when they do, um, for a collection like hers, uh, there's more than 130 pieces in the collection. There is no way we could include each one of them if we put them on exhibit. So to be able to, um, you know, pull from this entire collection and to allow people to really see what the curator sees is so much fun because I have this incredible luxury of being able to go into the storeroom and to see all of these pieces myself. And now I'm able to, through More Than Ordinary, help, uh, help the public have that same level of access to her art and her story. So tell me about this book and, and this project and, and how it all came about for you. So when I first took the position at the Missouri Historical Society, um, Anna Maria's was one of the first uh, names that I really became familiar with because we used selections from her artwork so often in our other exhibitions to illustrate articles because it truly gives a one-of-a-kind look at early St. Louis. So I became familiar with her work very early on but what I, what I came to realize is that um, although I knew her work, I didn't know her. I didn't know her full story. And it, you know, it dawned on me that uh, the public loves her. They love her art. And 
both myself and the public would love to know her full story. So I really knew that this was a project that needed to happen. I was presented with the opportunity to do a catalog of the Von Fuhl collection and jumped at that opportunity. And it was such, uh, such an experience to take a deep dive into her life, into her art, and to really bring that to light. Who was Anna Maria? Anna Maria was a woman who used art to connect with the world around her. As a young woman growing up at the end of the 1700s, early 1800s, uh, she did not have access to the same type of opportunities that was available to other artists, um, especially to male artists. And that did not stop her. She really um, left a well-documented legacy of decades of artistic productivity. And I think that's because whether she could make it as a professional artist or not, it was who she was. She was an artist and she was someone who really connected with others through that artistic uh, expression. One of the things I love about More Than Ordinary is that it begins with really what was the end of her life. Um, her obituary uh, in, in an Edwardsville newspaper, right? Yes, so it's always tough to open an essay. Um, you know, that is not an easy thing to do. And it's funny because when I started writing, that is actually the first thing I wrote because it came so naturally. It's what stood out to me when I started researching her life. I knew that she had an obituary. I had never read it for myself, and so I wanted to go and find it. And when I found it, I was amazed by its length um, and by how effusive it was. It's like a love letter. It is a love letter to her. We don't know who wrote it, mm -hmm. but it is so meaningful, and it really gives us such a sense of who she was as a person, about her caring nature, about how smart she was, and how truly she was more than ordinary, because that's, um, you know, that's where the title of the book comes from. And you see through that that through her personality and her talents and just her, her joy um, of living uh, influenced so many. And it's so great to think like here we are, you know, right. in this year, 2021, still talking about this, this woman that was probably, you know, no one really would have would have walked past her on the street, right, in, in early St. Louis and realized what she was giving us. Exactly. You know, she would have been sitting there with her sketchbook, sitting there with her watercolors, doing these uh, lovely hasty little uh, sketches of the street scenes and the landscapes around her. And I don't think anyone would have thought anything of it until, you know, until today when we can really look back and say, wow, she left us with a gift. I know, and it's interesting because that sort of anonymity that she had was so instrumental in what she was able to do and create. She was born in, was it Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, how did she develop just as a, as a young woman and, a, and as an artist? So she was born in Philadelphia. Um, her parents had several other children. Uh, they were you know, moderately well-to-do and successful there in Philadelphia until her father passed away. And when her father passed away, he left, uh, you know, he left some business debts and things like that that made it very difficult for the family. And so her mother decided um, in, a, in a bold decision to pack up her children and take them hundreds and hundreds of miles west to the brand new state of Kentucky. And so in, in 1800, they arrived in Kentucky from Philadelphia, a much smaller town. Um, Philadelphia had tens of thousands of people at the time. I believe that Lexington, where they settled, had only 1,700. So it was quite a change for her. But when she settled in Lexington, um, she really had this wonderful fortune to be connected with uh, another 
uh, artist couple that had also settled in Lexington of just a few years after her, George and Mary Beck. And Mary Beck operated a school for young ladies in Lexington. And among many other things, she taught drawing. And Anna Maria took drawing lessons from Mary Beck and quickly became very good friends with Mary, but also very good friends with Mary's husband, George Beck, who was, uh, as I said, also an artist. And we know from letters and her work itself that over the years she found a lot of mentorship and inspiration from this couple who, um, through them, she had access to a large collection of prints and other paintings to study from. And and that's reflected in her early work. So you see that she's copying these paintings by George Beck. She's copying these uh, European prints that she had through, through his collection. And that really formed the basis of a lot of her early art education was this copy work. What brought her to St. Louis? So when she was living in Kentucky, uh, she was unmarried. She remained unmarried until her death. And she, as an unmarried woman, did not have the means of living on her own, uh, either financially or you know, socially. It was not uh, something that was an option for her. So she and her sister actually spent a lot of time in the homes of friends and family. And her sister ended up moving to Edwardsville. And her brother, Henry, moved to St. Louis. And she remained in Kentucky for a time after that, but very quickly took several trips to visit her brother and sister here in the region, and then eventually moved back here permanently in 1821. And, uh, her siblings were really drawn here by opportunity because this was a, a bustling new, um, soon to be American town. Uh, Missouri was just on the cusp of statehood. And, you know, Henry had come here to really make his fortune as a merchant. And he was able to do that. And St. Louis at the time presented him with a lot of opportunity because it was so bustling and growing. You noted in, in the introduction to her work um, that St. Louis at that time was both a destination and a jumping off point. So it was this really unique time and place of just so much happening. It was. You know, uh, a lot of river towns have that feeling of being a, both a destination and a jumping off point. But not only was St. Louis a river town, it was a thoroughfare for people headed east and west as well, not just north and south. And so you had people stopping here uh, to, you know, get supplies and things like that before they headed even further west. And you had people returning from the west um, who would stop here to trade and sell and buy um, before heading back east. And so you really see St. Louis being this amazing, um, diverse city that had so many interesting people coming and going. You get the sense of this intersection of cultures and people and personalities. You have Native American, French, Creole, as you said, the Western expansion settlers. It was like this little microcosm of the beginning of, of a country. It really was. It was. And I think Anna Maria jumped into that world at a very unique time. St. Louis was part of the Missouri Territory. As I said, we were on the cusp of statehood. Um, that was an exciting time to be here. Uh, the population was growing. It was, um, it was just a really unique time to be in St. Louis while it still had, as you point out, that strong French and strong Creole heritage. So, you know, you see reflected there the American influence. You see reflected there in her art, the French Creole heritage, uh, the indigenous, um, you know, history that was here on the landscape. And so it's, you know, it's a unique place at a unique time. You have a line that I loved where it says, the St. Louis that unfolded before Anna Maria must have captivated her. And you really do get that sense as you look through her work. You do. And I think, uh, I think she did a wonderful job of translating her her captivation by St. Louis into art. And therefore, we can get that same sense of captivation today, you know, more than 200 years later, as we look through her artwork of what St. Louis was like. 
And I feel like what you really convey in More Than Ordinary too is just how rare of a gift this is. You know, we've had letters, you've had newspaper clippings, there's, there's these other sources, right? But to get a visual source, um, from a first person and a, and a really fresh eye like Anna Maria is just really rare, right, in what right. you do. It is. It is very rare. And adding an extra layer to that is the fact that she is a woman artist. And uh, not only is art from this time period uh, quite rare um, of St. Louis, but as a, as a woman artist, that adds an extra layer of unique to her story, to the art. And, you know, as a curator, I find that dynamic to be so insightful because female artists for so much of history have really gone unappreciated, unrecognized, unpreserved. They were creating art, but did it make it into the museums? In most cases, it didn't. Did anyone save it? Exactly, right, that, yeah. exactly. And so f to have her body of work preserved um, for posterity is, is wonderful. You mentioned earlier, too, just the challenges that she faced um, really being a pioneer in, the, in that sense. As, you know, as a woman at that time, uh, as an aspiring artist, had she been a man, she would have had a lot more opportunity to learn. You know, her early art education might have looked very different. And indeed, we can see that kind of comparison when we look at the lives of some of her friends who became artists, like Matthew Harris Jewett from Kentucky. And he had opportunities to go and study under, you know, American masters in the Northeast. And he came back to Kentucky then very, you know, sort of established in his ability and able to be successful. And she didn't have that opportunity to pick up and go study under someone who could really help launch her career. Um, even down to things that we might not think about, like how do you draw the human form? That's not an easy thing to do. And uh, at the time, men had the opportunity to take classes in anatomy um, and drawing classes that would give them access to models that they could work off of to learn to depict the, the nuances of the human body and how it moves in space and interacts with other things. And that is not something she had the opportunity to do. That's why she drew upon the uh, collection of George Beck's prints was because that was her way of accessing things that and subjects that she would never be able to access in person. So it was really a, a different experience for her. You've known this collection for so long, obviously, as you said, it's been such a, a part of, of, the, of the Historical Society. But were there any surprises that you found in going deeper into this work and, and anything that surprised you or revealed itself to you in that process? That's a great question. So, you know, I think there were some surprises. Uh, there were a number of silhouettes that she did. Um, and I did not realize just how many silhouettes uh, could be attributed to her. That's very unique. And then really seeing this progression of her art. You know, before I delved into it, I knew that there were some copywork pieces, that type of thing. I did not realize how many there were and that they would really give us insight into how she was learning as a student of art. So to me, that was very unique. I knew I knew about the beautiful watercolors of St. Louis and the people here, but to delve in and really be surprised at the number of uh, pieces that give us insight into her early life, that was, that was a wonderful surprise. So now you guys are working on the really big, exciting part that's coming next, which is the exhibit. Yes. Tell us about that. So that's scheduled to open? Uh, in May. Yes, May of, of the coming year, and it will be open until January of 2023. And this is a small gallery show at the Missouri History Museum in Forest Park. And I am so excited to have uh, the opportunity to not just present people with her work through the book, 
but get people in the door to see, um, you know, to see her work on the walls, to experience her story in a different way. I think that that's uh, really exciting and is going to connect a lot of people with early St. Louis in, in a new way. And now I'm sure it's hard to pick favorites from her work, but can you give us just even a couple and tell us about what, tell us about them to give us maybe just even a, a, a deeper view into them? Do you have your ones that? Uh, I, I do. I, I don't always play favorites, but with her work. We'll call that, it something else. Yes. <laughs> with her work, there are a few that stand out as being something special you know, particularly special. One of those that comes to mind immediately is always the scene of two St. Louis homes along the river. And that one is unique to me because as we talked, St. Louis was in this time of transition. It was a unique period for us. And that one piece of art encapsulates that time of transition because you have two homes and one of them is a French Creole style residence from the you know late 1700s. One of them is a very um, contemporary to the time period federal style, um, probably brick home that really symbolized this Americanization of the territory that was happening when Anna Maria was there. So to me, that's a unique piece of art because you see you see that transition, even though it's not spelled out, when you know what you're looking for, it's there as plain as day. So this is an amazing gift um, for anyone. Here we are coming up, hate to date us too much, but coming up to the holidays or any time of year, it's such a beautiful snapshot uh, of early St. Louis. Uh, where can, lots of different ways to be able to find this and enjoy this book and buy it. Um, it's yes. available at the... It is available at the uh, Missouri History Museum gift shop. We have a fabulous gift shop. You'll find this um, near the front right now. So uh, stop by to pick it up there. You can find it, I believe, on Amazon. Um, but I would really encourage people to come into the gift shop and uh, pick, the, pick it up there or, uh, you know, come in for Mother's Day in the spring, see the exhibition that opens in May and pick it up then. There's so many opportunities between the book, the exhibit, and then as you said, her work will live on probably even through future exhibits, right? Um, what do you want visitors, readers, all of us to sort of come away feeling or, or knowing after we've met her? I think it can be summed up in, in a few different points. I think number one is that St. Louis was a, early St. Louis was a vibrant, diverse, society um, that is so much uh, so much more than it looks on the surface. And so her artwork gives us those details to begin picturing what life was like then. And I also want visitors uh, to the exhibition or readers of the book to remember that women artists have such an important role in art history, in history, and to know her name because I think it is a very sad realization that I had um, that based on a, a 2016 study by the National Museum of Women in the Arts, that many Americans cannot name five women artists. And so if you take nothing else away from the book or the exhibition, I would love you to know that St. Louis had an incredible early woman artist and we know her name, we know her life story, and we know her work. The other interesting thing is that despite all that we have been able to learn about Anna Maria through you, there is one mystery about her that continues and lingers. There is a mystery and I would love to I would love to put it out there. Maybe someone else can help us solve this mystery. I was not able to verify a location of her burial. She passed away while visiting her sister in Edwardsville. Uh, she had been living with her brother here in St. Louis at the time. And I have checked both uh, towns for any record of her internment and was unable to find anything conclusive. So I would love to know and to solve this mystery in, you know, through future research or perhaps through, uh, you know, someone out there in the community that knows this information, where is she buried? And, you know, I think, again, not only is the burial aspect uh, a mystery, but 
as I mentioned earlier, we know how productive she was as an artist. And so it's a mystery to me why more of her artwork has not surfaced. And so I would love in coming years for more of her artwork, perhaps more of her letters to come to light. It's so exciting to feel like people are going to really get to see her now through this book and through this exhibit. And it just, is. it's gotta be so gratifying for you. It um, is, it is. Well, Hattie, thank you so much for joining us. It has been so nice to talk to you about this and we look forward to, to learning more. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity.